Well, Jim Comey and Adam Schiff have been all over television recently, desperately trying to act in their own interests, as always. They're trying to downplay the IG report from last week and how it exposed FBI lies, in particular lies to a FISA court that allowed them to spy on an American citizen, Carter Page. According to Jim Comey, it was not a big deal at all compared to a lot of other malfeasance currently going on at the FBI, none of which he would describe in any detail. But the FISA court appears to disagree. Today, in a rebuke, even the New York Times called, quote, extraordinary, the FISA court accused the FBI of repeatedly misleading it, the court, in the Carter Page case. The court gave the FBI until January 10th to propose changes to its procedures to prevent future abuses. Francie Hakes is a former federal prosecutor, knows a lot about this process. She joins us tonight. Francie, thanks so much for coming on. So when the when the court itself attacks the FBI for subverting the process, at that point, there's really kind of no denying what happened, is there? Well, no, Tucker, it completely destroys the Democrats' argument that there was anything partisan at all in the complaints that President Trump and President Trump's supporters and the Republican Party were making early on, all the way last year, early last year and even before that, talking about this FISA warrant against Carter Page and talking about being spied upon while people are trying to make much of the fact that President Trump said his wires were tapped. It looks like maybe Trump Tower wasn't actually tapped, but you had confidential human sources run by the FBI against three different members of the Trump campaign, including one against whom not a single criminal allegation had been made. No one's even talking about that. But what's extraordinary well, is may, Judge... May I ask you to pause right there? How can you wiretap an American citizen who hasn't even been accused leave aside credibly accused, but accused at all of a crime. How can that happen? I, you know, it's, it's a mystery to me, Tucker. They sent a confidential human source with a recording device of some kind against a, quote, high-level campaign official that we still don't know who it is, but we do know that they've admitted that there was no crime alleged well, how, against them. Why the hell them? don't we know who it is? Like, what an outrage is that? What, what, would be, what would be the pretext for keeping that secret from the rest of us? Well, I suppose it could be to protect them from being accused of something that they didn't do. But at this point, it seems to me that for full transparency, we yeah. need to know who it was so exactly. we might know who recorded them. You know, I, honestly, at this point, you feel like we need full transparency. And anyone who stands in the way of it should be charged with a felony and prosecuted, at least as vigorously as, I don't know, Roger Stone has been prosecuted. Right? Well, it's true, Tucker. And what the Rosemary Collier, what Judge Collier did today in this FISA order was so significant and so extraordinary. She took the inspector general's conclusions. She called the FBI on the carpet. She labeled what they had done uh, yeah. wrong and a violation of the court and said that they were not credible in their allegations and that they had to, in a very short order, explain to the court what they were going to do to make sure it never happened again. And significantly, she also mentioned an order of the FISA court that was apparently promulgated uh, just a week or so ago that was top secret, so none of us have seen it. And she's Doubly. ordered the Department of Justice to allow it to be declassified so we can see what Good. the FISA court wants. Keep in mind, it's so-called liberals who are defending all of this crap. There's nothing liberal about them. They're authoritarians back with corporate power, and you should be afraid of them. I am. Francie, great to see you tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Tucker.